Hey, what's going on? I just got back from MongoDB World in New York City. It was a great trip. Linode sent me to go here and I am absolutely convinced that MongoDB is going to be a big part of my future. So let's go ahead and break it down. Now, first and foremost, this event has three primary components to it. I would argue a lot of conferences like this do, and that is learning, sales, and connecting. Now, the learning part is throughout, right? So there's a lot of workshops, but also the keynotes, and then even on the partner floor where all of the other third-party vendors like Linode were there and helping educate people that came to the various booths, right? So learning is a core component of this whole thing. And then of course, once you move from learning, then you get into the sales talk where it's like buying into the vision or actually writing contracts for these various services in addition to MongoDB, but all of the other you know platforms and providers that were there. Um, and then finally, of course, connection, right? So actually being in person is so much different than just doing this stuff online. Now, if you've never been to a conference like this before, then I recommend that you try to go to one. Even if it's a little bit smaller, being in person with people that are in the tech space is, well, I think very, very interesting, exciting, and a really good way to learn some new stuff about things that you might have not overlooked or never even thought of before. That certainly happened to me. Also, the way this event was positioned is it wasn't too technical. There were technical dives, but it wasn't too technical. A lot of it was high level and a really good snapshot of, you know, how you can implement these things and how you can use them. More on that in a little bit. And then of course, developers, if you're not an absolute beginner developer, like if you can actually build some sort of application, this might be a good event for you to attend or watch the breakout sessions, the videos, if they come out later. I certainly will be covering more technical deep dives in the future. So be sure to check those out when they land. Now, my absolute favorite part was Mark Porter, the CTO of MongoDB talking. And it's not because I know Mark Porter. In fact, I've never heard of him until I was there, but he laid out this vision for different products and services in a way that really spoke to me as a teacher, but also as a developer, right? It was very clear that Mark himself knew the technical details that could probably implement a whole lot of them. The other part is the way he taught. It wasn't about going into those nitty gritty things. It was about more of like this high level overview with sprinkles of, you know, the nitty gritty. So developers like me can really, really get behind it. But the other thing is he actually ran workshops himself. So he's been in the industry 20, 30 years, maybe even longer with databases, with, you know, SQL all the way up to now Mongo. And he ran these workshops himself. These were small, intimate workshops in comparison to the big old you know, keynote it was. So that part was really, really cool. I really enjoyed that. And Mark himself was like one of the key drivers of like, oh yeah, I need to spend a lot more time in MongoDB. So I highly recommend you do the same. I also enjoyed meeting some of the Linode and Akamai team members. Granted, they sent me to the conference, so I was there because of them, but actually meeting with them allowed me to connect with them because we didn't have an agenda. It was just casual conversations that, well, ended up being brainstorming sessions for all sorts of cool things that I wanna do, that I wanna teach on, that they're in support of, which is fantastic. The other part is I wrote a book that I was surprised to learn that a lot of members of the team actually read, maybe not the whole thing, but they got something out of it, which was exciting because it's clear that they help support, well, even the content creators that don't work directly on their team. That was pretty cool. All right, so here are the key takeaways that I had at the conference. Number one, I need to spend a lot more time using MongoDB in projects as well as teaching it. For me, teaching it means that I get to know it a lot better and thus reinforce the projects that I use it on. That is almost certainly. Now, the big part of this is because of the time series analysis that's inherent to MongoDB. Now, if you're not familiar with this concept, it's really just you have a bunch of rows of data and in those rows of data, you have an actual date time object, like a timestamp on those rows of data. Now, doing that sort of analysis with a SQL database, a relational database, is not that hard to do. It's actually fairly common, but you have to do a number of manipulations just to use something that MongoDB does 
out of the box, which is cool. Can't wait to actually start doing those things because it really helps set the foundation for machine learning directly from the database with, well, with very little operations that you'll need to do to make it work, which is fantastic. The next thing, of course, is the huge focus on serverless technologies. Now, of course, at MongoDB World, it was about Atlas, their managed service, and the fact that they have a serverless offering now is also really intriguing as far as the future of MongoDB is concerned, especially the open source package. Now, serverless, if you're not aware, is the ability for you to just have your database work. It also works on the application layer, but just having your database work is fantastic. So as far as the database is concerned, sometimes you might need to have a more robust cluster running your database service. This is actually very common, but with serverless, you don't have to worry about that cluster. They will do it for you. They will worry about this for you. They'll scale it up as it needs to be scaled up based off of the number of requests. And they'll also scale it down based on what number of requests are coming through. So it's actually very, very interesting to think that serverless is the future of MongoDB. So much of it is going to be there. Now, the other thing is there's a huge need for more developers. And of course, if there's more developers, that means we need more people to train them. So if you're interested in training, this is the time to get into it. And I think there's a lot of fertile ground in the area of teaching MongoDB and all of the related services that go in with it. Now, of course, if you're just wanting to be a developer or you're wanting to get into data science or machine learning, also learning this stuff and being a big part of the role that uses the MongoDB stuff is also fantastic. So as far as training is concerned, as far as where you can fit in with a lot of these different places, you can actually probably make a great career out of just helping businesses understand the landscape that's out there. So like learning something like MongoDB, absolutely. Learning the different applications that you can bring to it, absolutely. But also where it can run, how you can run it. Do you have to use the managed service? Where does it make sense to use other kinds of services as well? Or where does it make sense to actually use open source? All of those things. I think there's a lot of ground for opportunity for all of us in that space. Something else I learned, of course, a bias in this case, because I was communicating with the Linode team a lot, is I learned about Linode startup credits. Right, so our startup program is called Rise. We give you 100% off for the first year, 50% off for the second year, and then 25% off for the third year. So you can spend that first year and that second year and even part of your third year just more focused on growing your business and developing your product and not have to stress about I burned through all my credits and now what do I do about this bill? You can kind of ramp into spend. And something that really surprised me at this conference was the fact that open source was not really talked about. The fact is MongoDB is an open source database. So we can run our own clusters without permission or official permission to do so. We can just spin up a virtual machine and run our own MongoDB, which is great. But the conference itself, it does make sense, but they didn't really talk about this aspect or their contributions to it, which is also interesting. I'm not sure why that's the case, but it's probably to help drive towards the managed services, which is you know, a big part of the reason this conference exists. But I would have loved to have seen a lot more on open source and the things that they're doing for it. Now, that being said, of course, MongoDB has a lot of built-in features that well, maybe are better suited as a managed service, right? So using serverless, well, running your own serverless cluster isn't a trivial task. So it's probably just easier to use their Atlas serverless option, for example. Now, the cool thing is MongoDB being that it is open source, it might lag a little bit behind what's offered on Atlas, but there's a really good chance that we'll see a lot of these things. Now, with all of this, NoSQL or NoSQL was also not talked about very much. This also actually makes a lot of sense because MongoDB itself is one of many kinds of NoSQL databases, and they don't all fit under the same exact category. So it makes sense that they would really focus on the document model itself, which is basically storing JSON data in a database. There's a few other things that it surprised me that are just kind of minor. Day three was a pretty empty day. There wasn't a whole lot going on. Ray Kurzweil did talk. <laughs> um, 
I was actually gave a presentation in the metaverse, which was a little confusing. Um, and I, what you see right here, I, I appeared as a 3D hologram. And it was pretty cool. I could walk around and it looked like I was there. But he's kind of reiterated a lot of the things that he's already said before. And I think a lot of it was also the fact that, well, he's got a book coming out with a lot of these same things. So it was really cool to see him, really cool to hear his thoughts, but it's not something new that I was like, oh wow, I should have stayed for day three just for that. The coolest thing about being in New York in general is there's so much great food. I probably had one of the best pizza places I've ever had without even trying. It was just by my hotel and I walked in, delicious pizza, is amazing. The location, the actual venue, the conference center was fantastic. It was one of the nicest ones I've ever been to. Um, and hopefully they do it there again in the future. And, you know, other things about the location that aren't so great is the tiny little shoebox hotel room that you get pretty much at any of the hotel rooms, unless you're going to be spending a lot. But that's some nitty gritty things that are just related to New York, not so much the conference itself. But those are my thoughts. Hopefully you got something out of this. If you did, let me know in the comments below and look forward to chatting with you guys next time and seeing you hopefully at the next conference. If you are at one and I'm there, please come say hi. I'd love to chat with you. Take care. Or visit your sponsors at the Partner Promenade. Ooh, did you say Partner Ooh, Partner Promenade. Yay, the fancy, fancy Partner Promenade. Other conferences would call it an expo hall. Not us. No, so it's the Partner Promenade. It's the fancy, fancy Partner Promenade. Let's go. Fancy, fancy Partner